لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره إن شاء الله We continue with the section on the moral, cultural and religious situation before the advent of Imam Zaman We have already mentioned several things and the first thing to start with tonight is that before Imam Zaman alayhi salam comes there would be many false claims and many liars who claim either to be Imam Zaman or either claim to be prophet and Already we know of many of these people that have claimed to be Imam Zaman or have claimed to be Prophet. Not to forget those people who have claimed to be God. And maybe still there will be more people to claim this, but we must be very careful not to accept people who claim, you know, that they are Imam Zaman. And indeed, some of these people in the history for whom this claim has been made, sometimes they themselves were not bad people, necessarily. But uh, people who were confused, when they looked at their good qualities, especially there were some of the people from the progeny of Imam Ali and Lady Fatima and in particular some of the progeny of Imam Hassan and Mujtaba some of them were very pious and sometimes even for these people such a claim was made that these are Mahdi because people thought that uh, the qualifications which are needed for Mahdi to be from the family of the Prophet from progeny of Lady Zahra to be so and so, they thought these are fulfilled in such people. But they forget other qualities which are needed. And for sure, we know that Imam Mahdi cannot be anyone than son of Imam Hassan Askari. And also, uh, we know many, many things about Imam Zaman that these were not fulfilled because at that time people didn't have also such a sophisticated understanding of the issue. So what I wanted to say is, to be fair, we should not think whoever was claimed to be Mahdi, first of all, he himself made this claim. Sometimes people did this claim. And sometimes these people were not bad people. They were very pious people. And people were mistakenly thinking that this maybe was Imam Zaman. But we must be very careful about this matter. Especially, I am worried that now that the enemies know about the concept of Imam Zaman and the significant role that Imam Zaman has in the mindset of Muslims in general and Shia in particular, there may be some plans either to fabricate some Sodo Imam Zaman or if they see that there are people who claim to be Imam Zaman, then they may support them so that at least they can bring confusion and division. So we must be very careful about this matter. There is a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he says, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يخرج المهدي من ولدي The day of judgment will not come until Mahdi from my offspring, from my progeny arises. Wala Yahrujul Mahdi Hatta Yahruja Setuna Kazaban. 
کلهم یقول و انا نبیون and Mahdi will not come unless there would be 60 liars who claim that we are prophet so as I said there would be peop- many people who would claim to be prophets and we have already had these people like you know Musaylemi Yekazab who was claimed to be a prophet and uh, sometimes even you know like Musaylemi uh, was not even man he was a woman and said that the prophet said La Nabiya Ba'di he didn't say La Nabiya Ba'di the prophet said there would be no prophet after me no male prophet but he didn't deny that there would be a female prophet after me so I am a prophet after the prophet. Another thing is that there will be lots of despair, lots of yas. Many people would lose their hope. And this is very sad, very indeed uh, dangerous. Because the only time that you make efforts is when you have hope. A person who is hopeful, despite all the difficulties, keep making efforts. But if you feel that there is no hope, then you give up. This is why we have in Hadith that one of the greatest sins is to feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you. And even this is greater than scenes of people who have murdered prophets. If someone has murdered prophets, not one prophet, prophets, in hadith it said that to feel that Allah will never forgive him is more sinful than murdering prophets. Because such a person would be a very easy victim in the hands of shaitan. Because if someone thinks that there is no chance for being forgiven, then shaitan can easily play with this person and do more and more. Ask him to do more and more. We should never be, you know, losing our hope. And indeed, the whole concept of savior is to give people to have hope and make efforts and know that sooner or later all these difficulties will finish. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Inna hadha al-amr la ya'atikum illa ba'da ayasin. This affair will not happen. This affair, hadha al-amr, means the establishment of just government of Ahlul Bayt, which will be led by Imam Zaman. This will not come unless or after until there would be yas, despair, spreading everywhere. La Allah hatta yumayyazu. By Allah this will not happen unless people are separated and made distinct from each other. And inshallah, I will talk about this concept later. That how people will be tried, and then the good people will be separated from the bad people. So, Yas is mentioned here. Another hadith is from Imam Baghir, alayhi salam. In which he says, "Fakhrujuhu, ida kharaja yakunu end al yase wal qunut min an yura faraja." Imam Zaman comes when people have despair and they don't think that there would be faraj. When they think that there is no hope for faraj, then faraj would come. And indeed. The Quran says that this is a general pattern that also has happened to previous nations. There is a very striking ayah in the Quran. Am hasibtum an tadkhulu al-jannah wa lamma ya'tikum mathalu alladhina khalaw min qablikum. 
مست هم البعصا و ذرا و زلزلو حتی یقول الرسول و الذین معه متا نصر الله الله سبحانه و تعالی says that to the Muslims who lived in the time of the Prophet but this is general of course do you think that you would be able to enter heaven while you have not been through all the difficulties and problems that previous nations have been to the extent that the Prophet and his followers said when is the victory coming when is the assistance of Allah coming so you must be so difficultly and hardly tested and tried so that only real real mu'mineen would still have hope and still make efforts so this is a very important thing about akhir zaman and there are different other hadith about this concept of yas in akhir zaman another thing is that in akhir zaman injustice and oppression will spread and this is something that you are all familiar that imam zaman comes when injustice has filled the earth and everywhere is a sign of injustice and oppression there is a hadith from imam sadiq alayhi salam and as far as i know this is the longest account the more detailed account about moral situation in akhir zaman there are about 120 things that imam sadiq mentions and I cannot mention all these, you know, 120 things that Imam Sadiq mentioned that this happened before Imam Zaman comes. But some of the things that our Imam mentions, and also this shows the significance of the subject that Imam Sadiq, you know, has spent so much time giving 120 uh, situations or conditions of Akhir Zaman. One of them is this that رَأَيْتَ الْحَقْ قَدْ مَاتَ وَذَهَبَ أَحْلُهُ when you see that the true or the truth because حَقْ can mean the true or the truth both of them has disappeared and also the people who follow the truth are not that much available as I said if you remember in the first session we understand from Ahadith that in Akhir zaman the number of genuine and real believers is not that much great. They are minority, a very small minority. And the battle would have majority. You remember in the first session, you know, we said about this. You would see that injustice has covered all the lands, all the regions, all the continents. And then Imam mentions something about the Quran, and the, one of the things Imam mentions, I mention only one of them, رَأَيْتَ النِّسَا يَتَزَوَّجْنَ بِالنِّسَا One of the things that you see in Akhir zaman is that women get married to women. This is our, you know, already what, what we see. Another thing is, you would see in Akhir zaman lots of heresies. Lots of heresies would appear in Akhir zaman Another thing is that a mu'min in Akhir zaman has to be silent. If he speaks, no one listens to him. In Akhir zaman it would be very difficult to talk to the people because they are so much distorted and confused in their understanding that what you say doesn't make sense to them and they, you know, make mockery of you. Now, nowadays, for certain issues, if you talk, they will say, oh, this man, you know, is not understanding and this man is, you know, mad or this man has come maybe from medieval ages. He doesn't know the world. Just, you know, 
whenever I have time I'm driving, I listen sometimes to the discussions on radio. And some of these discussions are very interesting, but some of them are very, you know, uh, disturbing. When you see that even on very simple things, people disagree, and like, you know, this current debate about, you know, child adoption and the position of the church, and how some people say you are discriminating against gay, you know, parents and this and that. So, you know, it's very difficult, you know, to follow up this discussion, you know, without becoming sad that how people, you know, have taken for granted many, many things and that this is a proper family and whoever doesn't want to help is discriminating. Okay, you don't, you know, want to give up your this a strange kind of, you know, relation, why you expect religious people to get involved and they also help you and support you? Okay, you know, I was listening to one of these Catholic people who was speaking, and he said, you know, we are not doing anything, you know, with these people. Just when they come to us, we say, sorry, we are not able to help you. These are the address of other agencies that you can go and, you know, if you need help, they can help you. But even this is not satisfying them. They want you to get involved. And they want you to recognize them. So, what is the end for this? Maybe if after 20, 30 years, people get married to animals. This, this is possible, you know. Already I have heard in the United States, someone has married to his horse. So, if this becomes normal, yeah, Maybe 100 years ago, we were laughing if someone was telling us that in future there would be homosexual families officially and legally supported. We would have laughed. But now we see. So if after 20, 30 years, there would be families of a human being an animal and they come to these adoption agencies. So if you don't accept, they say you are discriminating against animals. So what can you do? You are racist or you are anti-animal you know, rights. And so this is the amount of confusion that is in Akhir Zaman. So Mormon either has to keep silent or if he speaks, people you know, may not accept. Of course, it doesn't mean that we should not speak, but we must very carefully and wisely speak. This is our duty to speak. But this is the problem that you see. رَأَيْتَ الْفَاسِقْ يَكْذِبْ وَلَا يُرَدُّ عَلَيْهِ كِذْبُ On the other hand, you see that the people who don't have any moral principle, the people who are fasiq, sinful, they make lies and no one stops them. Everyone knows that this man is lying. But no one dares to stop this man. Why? Because, for example, he's head of a country or he is, you know, has lots of support or he is a you know, big, for example, uh, owner of media or whatsoever. So people cannot do anything. Another thing is that in Akhirul Zaman, The khamr and wine and alcoholic drinks would be, will be drunk in public, even in Muslim countries. And this is something that unfortunately has been there for quite a long time. In the early history of Islam, they couldn't have imagined such a thing would happen that in a so-called Muslim land, people would sell alcohol and even in Muslim airlines, you know, you see that they sell alcohol on the, in the flight and it makes you, you know, very sad. Another thing about Akhir zaman is that you see that the house of Allah, Kaaba, Masjid al-Haram, would be deserted. 
not that much people would go. And people would be asked not to go for Hajj. Up to now, we haven't seen this. Inshallah, maybe this can be stopped, I don't know. But this is something which is predicted that people would give up going for Hajj. And this is why Imam Ali alayhi salam in his will told that Allah, Allah fi bayt rabbikum. You must be very careful about house of your Lord. Never that house must be left without crowd. Because that's the power and dignity of and honor of Islam. Everything is attached to that house in a very symbolic way. There are many, many things. Whoever is interested in reading this hadith, he can refer to the commentary on Usul al Kafi by the late Muhammad Saleh Mazandarani, volume 11. And it's also mentioned in other hadiths. As I said, about 120 things, because I don't have time. Unfortunately, I just can mention some of them. And some of them are mentioned also in other hadiths, so we can mention them when we come to that. The other thing about Akhir zaman is in is that moral values will be in decline, indeed a collapse. For example, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, in Akhir zaman if a day passes and a person has not been able to do some great sin, such as misappropriating money of other people or cheating, or doing some kind of haram transaction, then this man in the night feel that he has not been, you know, a fortunate person. And he feels sorry for himself. He feels that this was not a good day for him because he couldn't cheat people. He couldn't deceive people. He couldn't have haram relation with someone. So this is the state of moral collapse. Another thing from Imam Ali alayhi salam is that in Akhir zaman for some people, dirham and dinar, golden or silver coin, which means money, money becomes their religion. People worship money. And also people would only have ambitions as long as the stomach becomes full. So every effort they make is just to make their stomach full. From what or from where is not important for them. They just want to enjoy eating and drinking and having all these kind of material pleasure. And also something that is in about Akhir zaman is that for some people, their qibla, qibla means the place of orientation, would be their women. وَقِبْلَتُهُمْ نِسَاءُهُمْ Of course, these nisa are not mu'min nisa, because if they are mu'min nisa, so they orient their husbands towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are satanic women that divert the direction of men, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards Satan. And some people in Akhir zaman obey their women and the cause would be to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to annoy their parents as we have in some hadith. That's even sometimes people annoy their parents because of their women. Of course, as I said, this doesn't apply to mu'minat and to good women. And alhamdulillah, we see that in many cases, we have believers among women who guide their husbands toward religion. And normally, my experience shows that whenever there is a mu'min wife, the man and children all are mu'min. 
the mother has very great role and effect, not only on children, also on the husband. And this is the way that they can manage to change the direction of the family. But this is also about some women who are not pious and obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing about Akhir zaman is that people in Akhir zaman some people would consider their belongings, their material belongings as the source of honor for them. So if they want to see who is more honorable, they say, okay, how much money he has in his account? What is his car? How big is his house? Where does he live? This is the way that they measure the honor of the people, the dignity of people in Akhir zaman In some hadith, several hadith, the time of Akhir zaman is compared to the time of ignorance, jahiliya. Once I told you that we are going to discuss about this. You know, the time before Islam is called Al-Jahiliyyah, the age of ignorance. The situation in Arab Peninsula before advent of Islam was very terrible from every aspect. The people were, were very ignorant the number of people who could read or write was less than number of fingers in hand of a person. So lots of superstitions and above all, worshipping idols. What a greater suspicion, uh, sorry, superstitious idea can be than worshipping idols. Going around Masjid al-Haram as tawaf but naked. And having women who were doing haram but without any hesitation and even they had flags on the, above of their roofs as a sign that this woman is a prostitute. This was in Ka- Mecca, near just Kaaba. It was a very awful situation in that time. This is, it is why it is called al jahiliya as you know, they were killing their daughters at the time. So, the Prophet ﷺ says that there would be another jahiliyyah after me. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ بُعِسْتُ بَيْنَ جَاهِلِيَّتَيْنِ I am sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between two kind of jahiliya, two kind of ignorance, two ages of ignorance. One before me and one coming after me. لَأُخْرَاهُمَا شَرٌ مِنْ أُولَاهُمَا And the second is much worse than the first. The type of jahiliyyah and intensity of jahiliyyah in Akhir zaman is much worse than the jahiliyyah which existed before Islam. Why? Because now people have all the skills and resources to expand the extension of this jahiliyyah. And it's very difficult to have your immunity. If those Arabs were doing something wrong, it was only related to themselves. They were not affecting the whole world. Even in many other parts of the world, they didn't know about them at all. How much power Abu Sufyan had? He was a rich trade man or businessman in Mecca. He didn't have that much power to rule and govern the world. And in the end, he was considered by other people not as a very civilized man. But in the Jahiliya, in Akhir zaman the situation is much different. The people who are creating and practicing this Jahiliya, 
They have control over many, many things. And they do it in the name of science, in the name of civilization, in the name of human rights, in the name of freedom. And then it would be very difficult to resist. So, the second jahiliyyah would be worse than the first. This is why Sayyid Qutb in Egypt, he had a book, he wrote a book called Al-Jahiliyyah in the 20th century. But unfortunately we see that the amount of this Jahiliyyah is increasing. You know, if 50 years ago he was witnessing that there is some kind of Jahiliyyah, you see that this is increasing. A person asked Imam Bagr alayhi salam. How does Imam Zaman behave? When he comes, what would be his manner? What would be his style? Imam Bagr alayhi salam said Imam Zaman would act in the manner of the Prophet. Then this man said, okay, what was the manner of the Prophet? Could you describe for me in few words how did the Prophet act so that I know how Imam Zaman is going to act? Imam Bagr alayhi salam said, Abtalama kana fil jahiliyyah. What the Prophet did, he stopped what was there in the time of jahiliyyah. Any ignorant act or practice or culture, the Prophet stopped. And the Prophet spread among the people justice. Because one of the most important disease in the time of Jahiliyyah is that there is no fairness, there is no justice. The Prophet stopped Jahiliyyah and spread justice and treated people with justice. وَكَذَلِكَ الْقَائِمْ أَجَّلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَرَجَهُ الشَّرِيفِ When Imam Zaman alayhi salam comes, also he stops jahiliyyah and he would deal with full justice and establish justice on the earth. And the result of this is clear. Do you think that when Imam Zaman comes and wants to stop jahiliyyah and spread justice, then everyone would say, thank you very much, we appreciate. No. The result is that many people would resist. This is why Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, إِنَّ قَائِمَنَا إِذَا قَامَهِ اسْتَقْبَلَ مِنْ جَهَلَةِ النَّاسِ أَشَدْ مِمَّا اسْتَقْبَلَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مِنْ جُحَالِ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ What Imam Zaman will receive from the ignorant people in his time would be worse than what the Prophet received from the ignorant time, ignorant people in the time of Jahiliyyah. In the other words, what Abu Sufyan and Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl and other people did with the Prophet would be less than what Abu Sufyan and Abu Jahl of the time of Imam Zaman will do with him. Because Jahiliyyah is more and the power that they have is more. And there is nothing to stop them. So it would not be an easy task for Imam Zaman to establish justice. But inshallah Imam Zaman will do this and we will talk about the way that Imam Zaman will act. And the last thing that I want to mention because I want to close, close this part tonight and inshallah tomorrow I want to do some inshallah talk about what happens after Imam Zaman comes in this regard. The last thing that we have is that before Imam Zaman comes, the good people and the bad people would reach their peak. So you would have the best people, the best of humanity in Akhirul Zaman, generally speaking, 
and the worst of humanity in Akhir zaman This is what I told you in the first session. I said, have this in your mind. We will come to that. For example, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, لا والله لا يأتيكم حتى يشقى من شقي ويسعد من سعد. By Allah, Imam Zaman will not come until the people who are wicked will reach the level of wickedness that they are after. And the people who are good and pious and fortunate will flourish in piety and goodness. So this is the time that both parties of good and bad will reach their peak. And in another hadith, again from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, that this will not happen until you will be tried very hardly, tested very hardly, and people would be, after test, made distinct. Many people look like each other. Because the reality of the people is not known. But after trial and test, the real nature of people become clear. So people would be made separate. The pious people from the people who are not pious would be separate. I think this would be enough, inshallah, for having some idea about the moral, cultural, religious situation before the advent of Imam Zaman. And inshallah, tomorrow we will start talking about what happens after Imam Zaman comes and how would Imam Zaman salam, manage the improvement in respect to morality and religiosity and culture. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll start questions uh, from the ladies. <laughs> I just wanted to, to, men, to add on to Ra'ayt al-Haq, yeah. or those sort of uh, 120. I can't remember, but I read somewhere, one of the signs of Akhira is that um, uh, the people will look for their prisoners, and uh, they go to wherever the thing the prisoners are, and they destroy everything in order to achieve what they want. And we can see it at the moment, this American... And um, what you call it, this guy? I forgot his name. The Arab, Osama bin Laden. Mm. Uh, so far, everywhere his name been mentioned. I wondered if you see that one of these hadiths in uh, Shia resources. That uh, people destroy <laughs> prisons? No, no. Um, well, let me put it this way. I read that one of the sign of Akhira is the people who act like ajuj majuj which uh-huh. they are you know they don't understand anything whatever you tell them you can see the quality in american um, behavior yeah. and they choose this name we are looking for our prisoner and you can see it they went to afghanistan and they said he's our prisoner and mm-hmm. they destroyed everything they took over they went to iraq for the same accusation um, and they want to do the same thing with iran and so on just wanted to know if you've seen the same hadith in Shia resources. No, what we have is that Yazharu Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. We have about Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. But whether, because Ya'juj wa Ma'juj were real figures, it's not a metaphoric expression. So, if you want to say that this doesn't refer to those Ya'juj wa Ma'juj, it means people who have some quality like them, that is a way to interpret. But uh, we have that Ya'juj wa Ma'juj will appear in Akhir zaman But I didn't mention this because this is not something about the moral cultural situation about Akhir zaman Because many, many things happen in Akhir zaman And indeed there are many also natural signs mentioned about Akhir zaman But I didn't talk about those signs because I am 
only talking about intellectual, uh, scientific, moral, cultural, and religious situation. Uh, in respect to people going after the prisoners, I haven't seen anything. Maybe there is something, but I myself haven't seen anything in our sources about going after prisoners. Alaykum. Alaykum. Uh, during your talk, you said that uh, Imam Ali said that uh, there will be very few people going to Hajj. Mm. Right? I've heard one of the Alim or Zabi. No, no, Imam, this is Imam Sadiq. Imam Sadiq. Yeah. The, I have heard the, from one of the Zakis that uh, there will be obstacles. Will this be the cause of uh, people not going, or people will not go themselves to Hajj? Mm. It doesn't mention what is the reason. Just what says is that the house of Allah will be suspended and people would be asked not to go there. But uh, who asks what kind of problems they make for the people? It's not here. It's just here is رَأَيْتَ بَيْتَ اللَّهِ قَدْ وَيُؤْمَرُ بِتَرْكِهِ people no longer go for Hajj. It doesn't mean that no one goes, but not that many go for Hajj, and people would be asked not to go for Hajj. Because I remember very well, alhamdulillah, that this uh, Zaki said that uh, when for seven years consecutively uh, mm. there are difficulties for the Hujjaj to go yeah. to Hajj, then that is uh, the time very near to the advent of 12th Imam. I've heard. I'm not a scholar. I've, yeah, I've heard maybe. the Yeah, I remember very well what is here, but I, I don't remember that, unfortunately. Any questions from the ladies? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa Um When you look at this list of 120 things, we yeah. we don't know all of those things, um, but. Every time one or two or three or more is mentioned, everyone thinks, ah, oh, well, that's what's happening now. And what, what do you think, from your opinion, knowing the detailed <coughs> list, do you, think, I mean, do you think that time is near, or is it like a hundred years away, a thousand years away? you think things can get a lot worse than they are now? You know, we always should think that this can be very soon. This is what we sh are supposed to think. Because, first of all, many of these things have happened. Even if there are things that which have not happened, these are not very important. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to uh, bring Imam Zaman, Sharif, we have in Hadith that even in a day and night, Allah will prepare everything for his advent. So, not only in our age, even, you know, people previous, you know, uh, generations, they had this hope that they would be able to serve Imam Zaman. But in our time, it's much more likely because you see that how fast everything is going, you know, and happening. In the last two, three decades, we have witness things that maybe was happening in the previous you know, time in two, three centuries. How quick everything is going you know, and happening. So I am not surprised if Imam Zaman comes in our own time. I am not, you know, uh, I don't think this is strange. But I cannot say when. No one can say when. It's also very much based on the way that we act, if we act properly, and if we are ready, inshallah Imam Zaman comes very soon. And we must hope and we must pray, we must inshallah prepare ourselves. There are lots of you know, hope that inshallah we would see Imam Zaman inshallah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, just from that point, is it not very dangerous for us to ta start speculating when the, 
Zahur is going to take place because in history we have seen that the religious establishment became very fervently attached to the the, the Zahur is about to happen and an opportunistic man stood up and we had a, you know, a new religion stand up because he claimed he was the thing. So we have to be very careful yeah. making such predictions as to when he's coming and so on. It is what are your views on that? Yeah, as I said, we must have hope, but no one can pr- predict what time, when, maybe very soon, maybe very late. No one can say it will be late. There is no one who has this authority, this knowledge, who can, who can say, okay, it must be no sooner than 100 years or no sooner than 20 years. No, no one can say this. Maybe it will be next year. Who knows? So, we must always be in the state of hope and at the same time we must be very cautious, as you said, not to specify any time because no one can specify any time. And we have many hadiths which says, Kazab al Those who mention a time, these are liars. No one can mention any time. But you must always have hope. Maybe, inshallah, very soon, maybe. This hope is useful. But if you want to say that certainly this happens in this time, no. If you say certainly it's not going to happen, again, this is not accepted. So, just we must be hopeful. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We talked about the participation of children of Lady Zainab in the battle. And that's how Imam Hussein alayhi salam decided to go and bring them back towards the tents of Ahlul Bayt. So I continue the narration. Part of what I'm going to mention is from Maktal by Abi Mekhnaf, but part of it's also from other sources and maybe uh, some of the things are added for the sake of clarification or illustrating what has actually happened. So uh, we should bear this in mind. Assalamu alayka ya Abu Abdullah Wa ala al-arwa'illati Hallat bifnaik Alayka minni سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنار ولا جعل الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين When Imam Hussain wanted to bring back the bodies of sons of Zainab, Abbas came rushing from the camp towards him and said, Let me carry on the body. 
And you take Muhammad's body, my master Abbas is still alive to share your burden. Imam Hussain handed over his corpse to Abbas and went over to pick up Muhammad's body. On reaching their camp, Hussein and Abbas laid the bodies of all and Muhammad on the ground. Zainab, who was waiting for them, came over and fell on the two bodies of her son. My sons, my sons, she cried. My darling, you have gone from this world with your thirst unquenched. Your grandfather Ali will be there to quench your thirst in heaven. My beloved sons, for Zainab, there is still a long future to face without you. <laughs> then overpowered by her grief and emotion, she fell unconscious on the dead body. As was the practice of the Yazid's army, they started beating the drums on this victory. When the beating of drums stopped, they raised the usual cry, challenging the young defenders of Hussein to come out into battle. Now Hassan came over to Hussein. He quietly handed over the letter to Imam Hussein. And finally Imam Hussein gave permission to Hassan. Hussein was brought back to the memories of his dear brother and wept a lot recollecting his love and affection. <laughs> With a fourth man managed to control himself and turned to Hassan, dear son. Your father's wishes leave me no other alternative. March on, Ghazim. If it is so ordained that I may bear the wound of your martyrdom, I shall go to the will of God. Then Ghazim hurried to his mother to give him this good news that Imam Hussein has accepted. As Ghazim entered her tent, she raised her head and looked at him. She could see from the look that Ghazim had received Hussein's permission. The thing that he has been begging so long. Then he, followed by his mother, went over to Zainab's tent to bid her goodbye. Zainab had not completely recovered. She realized that Ghazim had come to pay his last respect. She looked at him and then at his mother who was following him. She understood with what a force Om Farve was controlling her feelings. 
Majazer Onad was bursting with grief at this parting with her beloved brother's son. You knew, she knew that she must control herself for the sake of Umm Farwell. And then finally Qasim came to say for very well and kissed hands of Imam. <laughs> Imam alayhi salam wept bitterly and kissed Qasim. And held Qasim to mount his horse. And then said, Qasim, I shall not be long to joining you. Reaching the battle, Qasim addressed the enemy with an eloquence which reminded them of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Umar Asad was very frightened that the words of this young man may affect his soldiers. So soon as them to fight against this young boy. But Ghazan was very brave, the progeny of Ali and Hassan. When Umar said so that no one could, fee, could win the battle, so he asked the, so the army to attack Ghazan together. Then Qasim was wounded from head to foot. This was the time that he had to call Imam Hussein. He said, Ya Amma, O Anikel, and then he fell down on his face. Then the narrator says that Imam Hussein, like a lion, went to do the army of Umar Azad, so that maybe he can protect the Ghazan. When Imam Hussein reached Ghazan, he realized that there is no hope left. And Ghazim was moving in his feet on the sword. Then Imam Hussein said, Bodan l'gawmen gatalu wa man khasmum yawm al-qiyamat fiq jaddu Those people who have killed you and your grandfather will be their enemy on the day of judgment. There is no hope for them. The Imam Hussein said, Azza wa Allah ala It is very difficult for your uncle. What? And that oh, you give up. It is very hard for your uncle to call him, but he cannot answer you. Or if he answers, he cannot benefit you and help you. Then the narrator says that Imam Hussein carried the body of Ghazan 
بدی سز دادای شو داد فی تفقاسم بر آند از تو میلیو زین دیدن ابد پاو تو ریز د بدی so he was just carrying the body and then Mahuzain took the body of Ghazim towards the tent and put next to the body of Ali Akbar and the sons of Zainab. میروی یا میکنم سوی تو با حسرت نکا بس که سهرا پر خروش از لشگر باطل بود حق شنیدن از لب تکبیر گوید مشکل است There are so many noise of enemies in this battlefield that I cannot hear properly your voice بس که عبر خاک و خون بگرفت روی ماه تو از بس این پرده ها دیدار رویت مشکل است There are so much blood and dust on your face that I cannot see your face properly در دم جان دادن در دم جان دادن گفتن امو جانم بیا غرق در خون دیدن تو بر امویت مشکل است In the last moment of your life When you called your uncle to come To see you covered with your blood is very difficult for your uncle اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم اللهم ارزقني شفاعة الحسين عليه السلام يوم الورود وثبت لي قدم صدق عندك مع الحسين وأصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مواجههم دون الحسين عليه السلام حسين يا حسين يا حسين يا حسين يا حسين